Uh, Drake London sounds like a private investigator. It's a right? great name. It's a great name. It's a really better London. name than fantasy, it's fantasy production. Yeah, I mean. His name is one of the head-to-head matchup yeah. there. Drake London PI? Yeah. Like, that guy can take my case. Yeah. Yeah, kind of Drake London, kind yeah. of lead of uh, CSI New York. Yeah, I don't. You can, you can totally. That's a great, like, it's a great sort of like detective name. Like, yes. you know, just like who just showed up in a trench coat at the crime scene? Oh, that's Drake London. That's Drake London. That's Detective Drake London. <laughs> yeah. Like you can't, you know, what are we doing there? You can't. Oh God, oh God, I'm a criminal. Yeah. Uh oh. Apparently they just, they brought in Drake London. I'm screwed. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Wednesday and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry and Roto World's Lawrence Jackson, as he is always here every Wednesday with us. Boys, what's going on? How are we feeling? I'm just curious. Do you check with Roto World? Does Roto World actually claim Lawrence Jackson? Absolutely. Like, are they like, yeah, hey, that's our Lawrence Jackson? He had a great if video Roto World, this morning. If, Ro if Roto World's walking down the street, do you think they're like, you know, who, who's our guy? That guy? That, that's a good question. But, or is but it, NBC's Lawrence but Jackson? But at the very Could least. NBC Sports Lawrence Jackson. I, I'm both. But okay. I got to represent for my partners at Roto World what it do family. All right. Fair enough. Like, because I'm not Roto World's Matthew Berry. I'm just like, I'm whatever. I'm the contractually That's true. obligated Matthew Berry. It's what they're, they're You're like, just I'm, whatever the company the, needs you to be, Matthew I Berry. I pretty much am. I'm like sort of the, yeah. I'm the, I'm the cousin that get, that's forced to be invited to Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's is what I am. It's, that's. And then I am nobody's Connor Rogers. No. I just show up where I need to yeah. day by day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Restricted free agent <laughs> Connor Rogers. Restricted is a good way to put it. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's get into right. the Roto World headlines here because we have a lot to go through in the middle you of the week. You know who would be good to figure out whether Roto World actually claims? Lawrence Jackson. Detective Drake London. Get him yes, on the case. Sir. I'm working on an animated <laughs> series where it's Detective Drake London. And I, and I need him a I, I want to give him a sidekick. And what I'm thinking is, I'm workshopping this, but it's like, you know how it's sort of like Scooby-Doo back in the day, they, they used to solve mysteries? <laughs> yeah. He has a talking falcon. Okay. And see where I'm going with this. You understand what I'm saying? So he's got, yeah, it's a yeah, bird, yeah. but it's a falcon, and the falcon sits on his shoulders and squawks like things, and like, you don't think the falcon's paying attention. And so the criminals are doing stuff while Drake London's off, and like, and then the falcon actually talks, but the only one can hear him is Drake London. And so the falcon be like, ah. <laughs> you, 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 Falcon voice. you yeah, gotta find, you gotta like find a, a way. A little bit of a parent you, slash yes. pirate. You gotta find a way to, you know, get this Falcon with the peacocky and have them team up and do some. There you go. You, you gotta get that I got going a whole right there. Murder mystery hour going on <laughs> Saturday mornings. On, uh, on Peacock. And that sounds good. It's just Drake London always looking for a quarterback that could actually throw him the football. That's true. That's factually every correct. Single that's week. Because that's exactly. a hell of a mystery. Yes. Right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And something a else. A playbook that has a passing play in it. How about that? <laughs> something that else is that uh, that right. is a mystery right now is Jalen Hurts. Yeah. This is the mystery of the week, especially for those in the fantasy football playoffs. Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni has said that both him and Gardner Minshew uh, are preparing to play in week sure. 16. So there's a lot of mystery here, guys. Hertz did not practice Tuesday. We know Gardner Minshew was at um, Coach Leach's uh, memorial service yes. as well. So there's Life not a lot of Mike Leach. Yeah, yeah so there's not a lot of practice uh, to report on here. So this is going to carry on throughout the week. So number one, how do you how do you handle a situation that is is you know vital as this this time of year in fantasy? It's it's certainly tough. I I think if you had to place a bet on it, so to speak, or, you know, just, I, I think the expectation has to be that it's more likely than not that he does not play. I understand that there's a, you know, that hurts saying, you know, quote, you know, definitely a chance taking it day by day. But as we talked about yesterday and, and certainly he wants to get out there and the competitive spirit, but they have to be smart. Eagles only need one game. They only mm -hmm. need one win the rest of the way uh, to, to clinch the home field advantage throughout the, the NFC it's playoffs. Crazy which is, you know, credit to everything the Eagles have accomplished this year. So they only need one game. And then, again, as we sort of talked about a little bit yesterday, if they beat the Saints, who's who they play in Week 17, right. if they beat the Saints, they own the Saints' first-round pick this year. And so if they <laughs> beat the Saints, then that's good for the Eagles because it means the Saints will pick lower in right. the draft next year, a pick that the Eagles own. And so, I, I, again, like, not if he plays this week – Obviously, Hurts is going to play next week as right. well, but you could see them making the sort of calculation, let's give him a week. I know it's Dallas, whatever, 
By the way, there's a chance we play Dallas again in the finals and, you know, yeah, in the playoffs yeah. at some point. That's a good point. Right? So maybe we don't want them to get a look at Jalen Hurts and, and uh, on the, you know, and don't don't figure out our game plan of how we would play them with Jalen Hurts because remember the first time they played, Cooper Rush was the Cowboys quarterback. Right. We have yet to see Dak versus Jalen this year. And so, I don't know. I just, I have, I, this, is, this is a story that you're tracking, but I think what you're doing is you're making sure you have another plan. Uh, for God, for Jalen Hurts, you know whether it's Gardner Minshew or another guy as well. Um, I'm lucky in that the 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 biggest league that I have Jalen Hurts in is a keeper league, and so I have Joe Burrow. So I'm just there whatever. Go. I'm gonna there I'm gonna go. roll with Joe Burrow. Let's hear from both Hurts and Sirianni because they did discuss early this week on the potential of him playing. Definitely a chance. Um, taking it day by day, though. You know, I, everybody knows that I'm dealing with something. I think that's pretty public is out there. Um, I'm not one to really talk about myself. You know, obviously being a quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles, you you can't run from that, you know, but um, I'm taking everything one day at a time with it and um, preparing versus a really good defense. We're going we're gonna to talk about that defense today. Make sure we don't miss that. Um, he's at a sprained shoulder, and I do not put it past Jalen Hurts. I don't put anything past Jalen Hurts um, as far as his mental and physical toughness. So there's a chance he could play this week. And so um, he is one of the toughest guys I know. Um, and he heals fast. He's a freak. His body is not like, pardon me, yours or mine, right? And so I'm, I'm shaming myself there a little bit too. His body's not like ours. Um, he heals fast. I didn't, he came back fast from his injury last year. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't, I will not rule him out. I will not put a timetable on him. Um, and we'll see. Lawrence, let's say the team protects the player from himself in this situation, especially with the stakes for the Eagles not yeah. being significantly high. Say it's Gardner Minshew. How do you see that impacting the rest of the offense, starting at the top with somebody like AJ Brown? Well, we still gonna start our normal Eagles players that we start uh, any other week. You even get Dallas Goddard back. That helps Gardner Minshew. Minshew, you still rolling out. Devontae Smith, he's been on the road the past three weeks, wide receiver 11 over that span. And this will actually this actually might be better for them as, you know, Gardner Minshew, while he is, mo he is mobile, he won't take that rushing production away from Miles Sanders, away from receivers when they're moving down the field. He'll use his mobility to make that extra throw so he could get the job done. He's averaged over 210 yards in his two starts last season for the Eagles and threw for two TDs in both games. So he could get it done in a spot start and, you f and you'll feel the same pretty much about all the Eagles players. I would agree with that. I mean, I think for the for the people that have, you know, if you've got A.J. Brown, if you've got Miles Sanders, you've got Dallas Goddard, who we expect to come back in this one, I think you're starting the normal Eagles that you would start. Uh, it's worth noting that one of Minshew's starts last year came against the Cowboys in which they all, you know, they, they benched a lot of their starters in that particular game. But I agree with Lawrence that um, that that hurts, uh, that you're st regardless of who the quarterback is, you're starting the normal Eagles that you would start. Here's the one thing. So it's a four o'clock game. So we may not know, and this may be some gamesmanship with their division rival, as opposed to, we'll see, we're gonna test yeah, it out preseason. Yeah. I, think, I think we will have, this is such a big story. I think we will have a lot more information as we get closer, whether he practices, whether he, you know, with the limited practice, whole thing, game is in Dallas, does he even travel? You know, if they're not gonna play, they, it depends. So we'll see, but it's worth noting. So it's a 425, uh, it's a 405 game on Saturday. Saturday. So right. you will have, here's some of the games that will come after uh, the 405 game. You've got, uh, you've got uh, Vegas at Pittsburgh. Maybe Kenny Pickett's available in your league. You're going to have Green Bay at Miami. Probably won't. But Denver at Los Angeles. Potentially, um, well, it looks like it's going to be Russell Wilson there. But, you know, maybe Baker Mayfield's out there. <laughs> maybe Russell Wilson's out there. Tampa Bay at Arizona. So potentially uh, Trace McSorley. Uh, looks like and then as we just breaking news that just happened just before um, we came on air which is that the expectation here is the Colts are moving away from Matt Ryan and going to Nick Foles for Monday night's game against the Chargers so Nick Foles likely out there in your league as well yeah, yeah. so there's a couple of guys you could pivot to if we don't have the knowledge but I think the best case scenario is we sort of roll through those guys also worth noting by the way Washington is at San Francisco 
So the chance Taylor Heineke and Brock Purdy is available in your league, that's a 4 o'clock game. You'll know if Hurts is active before, right. before the uh, Commanders and Niners kicks off. Feels like to me, as I sort of read through those names, that my best chance is, hopefully, you just get Gardner Minshew. And yeah. if you don't have Jalen yeah. Hurts... Because you want you, those you, weapons, would you? Right, exactly. I, I think Minshew, even against Dallas, Dallas is a bottom 10 uh, pass defense over the last two weeks. I don't think it's always going to be pretty. Yeah. But I think that um, Minshew is the best option of guys available if you're going to pivot. It just sort of depends on what the other options are. Because, again, like I said, in my keeper league, I have Burrow as well, and it's a one-quarterback league. So, I'm, whatever, I'll just roll with Burrow. I'm not going to take the yeah. chance. Let's pivot to one of those options because you brought up Kenny Pickett and Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin has said uh, Pickett, he's cleared concussion protocol. He's going to start uh, week 16. Barry, where do you have Pickett ranked this week if he is one of those guys that, listen, you're desperate and you have to go that route? Yeah, and by desperate, that means there are 20 quarterbacks that are not available to you because I'm at QB 21. Yeah. Uh, I, Kenny Pickett uh, has a great matchup. I mean, let's let's be clear. I mean, the Raiders the Raiders are not good defensively. They're not good against opposing quarterbacks. They nope. give up the fourth highest completion completion percentage, the fifth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. This is a good matchup for Kenny Pickett to get back in the lineup. Having said that, he's got one game. Kenny Pickett's got one game this year with more than 14 fantasy points. And so, does that come against a Raiders team that you know had an emotional win last yeah. week? Oh, oh, you know, the crazy walk up victory. Raiders still. Um, Still somehow magically alive. Um, game is in Pittsburgh, which is positive. So you got a West Coast team traveling east on a short week for a one o'clock game. Um, fairly desperate. Like if we were doing beer goggles, three and a, three beers and a shot okay. to start Kenny yeah, Pickett yeah, yeah. is where warm. I would be. Sort yeah, of like, yeah. you know, yeah, I'd want to be pretty like, yeah, let's, Kenny Pickett, let's <laughs> roll. Yeah. I'd want to be, you know, glug yeah, glug. You, yeah. Yeah. More, yeah. Su- more super flex Kenny Pickett rather than your yeah. one point. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah, a little bit. If but, anything, it should be good for Pat Fryer move, right? Mm. Who? Zero good. targets from Trubisky. Yeah, in 15, good, so I good, good for Fryer move. Good for the, I don't, Kenny Pickett has obviously had an up and down year. He's better than he's better than Mason Rudolph. He's better than Mitch Trubisky for this offense. Yeah, so for the yeah. Steelers players you care about, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, Najee Harris, then yeah, I think this is a positive. Yeah, nowhere to go but up. Nowhere to go but up for Pat Fryermuth, who was also banged up last week as well. Yeah. All right. Another potentially uh, big injury-related news is the Bears activated Khalil Herbert, who was dealing with the hip injury from the injured reserve. So he's designated to return. Listen. Lawrence Herbert was, he looked great, quite simply, before getting hurt. He was starting to eat into David Montgomery's workload where it wasn't just 80-20. It started to become more 50-50 for Herbert. Are there any expectations for him as he returns towards the end of the season in an offense that is just looking for anybody to touch the football besides Justin Fields? Yeah, I, I would say yes, but the expectation isn't anything crazy, right? After David Montgomery came back from his injury, uh, and they were both in the game. Khalil Herbert averaged nine carries and 54 yards a game, which is solid. Not enough to really diminish what David Montgomery did, and he was only getting two targets a game before he got hurt as well. So, And in this game versus Buffalo, right, that game going to be cold as hell. You're going to see a whole lot of running from both the quarterbacks, both the running backs on both teams. So it, this could actually end up being decent for everybody, and it's just going to be like, hey, Whoever want to break that long touchdown run, you know, have at it. Yeah, listen, I think Lawrence's point is well taken. I agree with everything you just said. But then I think about, like, okay, let's take what you just said and translate it to fantasy, which is, like, am I still – it's week 16. I'm in the fantasy semifinal. Oh, starting? Am I, am I no. doing any – right, exactly. Are you starting Bill Herbert? No, 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 no. No, I, no not unless something no, happens no, no. to David Montgomery between now and then. To your point – Bills give up the 12th fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs, and it's his first game back. And so what is that? We think he gets I, – I think if I had to pencil something in, I'd say somewhere between 35 and 40% of the running back snaps yeah. in this game. Like, it's a – it's it's he's he's 1B to Montgomery's 1A, right? Sure. I mean, like, yeah, it's, not yeah, a, yeah. It's, it's not a full-time share, but it's more than just a backup role for yeah. Herbert. But I don't mind grabbing him and and um, seeing how this plays out because after Buffalo, they're at the Lions and they're at the Vikings. Now Lions have played better run defense yes. so far, but because um, but because of the mobility of Justin Fields, that op- and the fact that like 
they didn't have Chase Claypool. Like, they got no – I mean, like, Byron Pringle is getting targets yeah. on this team. And, and so, you would expect – I agree with Lawrence – they would go run heavy. Um, game is in Detroit in under the Dome and then at Minnesota. So, they have – after this week's game, which is at home against the Bills, they have two uh, domed games. But the Vikings are bad run defense in, in Week yeah, 18 he, he, if they you play there, too. And, and, right, and, and while the Lions have played better run defense, they're not impenetrable. Sure. And, you know, and so – is there a chance that if we see sparks from um, Khalil Herbert this week that he becomes flex-worthy against the Lions? There's a chance. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind picking him up. Again, by the way, there's always a chance that Montgomery gets hurt as well. All right. An interesting stash for now is Khalil Herbert. We are going to yeah. take our first break. When we're back, though, fellas, keep it open or close it out. The most interesting sit-start names of the week uh, on a loaded, loaded slate. Yeah, no question about that. We will come back in a moment. But I just want to take one moment, if you don't mind, Connor, before yeah. we go to break and just take a moment to acknowledge that uh, this morning, just before we came on air, uh, the world lost an NFL legend, Franco Harris, of course, best known for the immaculate reception, but somebody who wasn't just a legendary, legendary player on the field, but also off the field, the tales of his kindness and generosity are, um, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, at a, I'm at a loss for words, and I apologize here. Just um, many, many tales of, of, of his greatness as not just a p- football player, but as a person. And so uh, all of us here at the show express our sincere condolences and much love to the Harris family, to the Pittsburgh Steelers, their organization, all of their fans, and Franco's many fans worldwide. I don't think it affects anything. I mean, he didn't come in running a 4-4 when we got him. So, you know, we have our stuff tailored around him and what he can do. He's mobile enough to move in the pocket, whether it's one step or two or three steps to the left or right and make plays. And, you know, we got to protect him better and then we got to get open and we got to get rid of the ball as well. That was Bucks coach Todd Bowles telling it like it is on Tom Brady's wheels. So this is time for keep it open or close it out. If you're new to this, which I don't think many of you are, it's basically no, 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 because well, we're in a bar. We're in a bar. We're in a bar. Get Definitely it? Keep it open bar. or close it Keep out. Keep them in the lineup. Right. Or close it out. Or close it out, much like you would with a bar tab. Yes. You know, Get me it's out of like here. you're 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and you're like, what, how you feeling? You know, you're uh, like, nah, nah, close it out. I got I to gotta get home. Damn, like, you're that old. Yeah, I'm about to say, that's early, dog. 11. That's not early, that dog. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, I got I want to be clear about this. Did <laughs> <laughs> his face drop uh, when no, you said no, that? No, no, no. Look, let's be real here, right? Keep I'm, it real. I, I'm a married man. Say. With five kids. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And, oh, and, five. You got and, me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Married man, five kids, semi-recognizable. Like, I'm on TV. Like, all you need is one guy with a f- cell phone being like, oh, that's the fantasy guy that yep. screwed me in week three with yep. his love-hate article. <laughs> right? Nothing good happens. Yeah, you're right. I, you know, my mom always said nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> but when you are, you are married with five kids and semi-recognizable, nothing good honestly happens after eight. Yeah, after I should never time. go out. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah no, you're, I agree. If you had th- somebody had three beers, they'd probably throw in kicker questions. No, in I will, I, this, is a ran- this is a random story. I'm going to go off, off the – but I was – uh, this is, no, I was um, – uh, I had been at ESPN maybe a year, right? And so, like, no one really knew who I was. But, like, I was – occasionally you'd see me on SportsCenter or something like that. And so I'm at a bar. And, and I'm, by the way, I'm a single man at this point. You know, my wife and I met at ESPN. But I'm a single man at this point, and I'm at a bar. And I'm with a couple of people from work. There's, like, five or six of us, and we're all at a table like this. And at the table, in all seriousness, so take a wide shot here, so if we can. So at the table are is me, and sitting where Connor here is in the middle is a woman, and next to the woman is her boyfriend sitting where Lawrence is. So the three of us, are, right, we're, we're having this conversation, and we're having a conversation like this, and we've got beers and everything like this. And someone took a photo of the three of us, cropped out the boyfriend, <laughs> and sent it to a blog, and so there's there's there was this article in a blog, and I'm not going to give reference to the blog, but there was an article blog that like, oh, here's Matthew Berry like hitting on some woman, and they took that picture, and it's just like that. Make no mistake, when I was a single man, I certainly like you know would express interest yes, in yeah, other yeah, single yeah, you would women. Speak to women, <laughs> right? I would, speak to, I, would, I would speak to women when I was out in a social <laughs> setting where it was appropriate to do so, but um, but in this particular case, like literally just having. I'm talking with a couple that I was friends with, but because of the way the angle, the way they shot it, and then the blog post is all about me, like, apparently hitting on this woman, which is not at all, and I was just like, yeah. oh. Like, that was a big lesson for me as, like, 
oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. apparently I'm now in the public eye and I need to figure out, you know, like I need them to now be aware of at all times what I'm doing. Even in a harmless situation, the well, most I'm, harmless The most situations. harmless situation. And again, like at that point, I'm, it's, I'm on ESPN.com in small video segments and, you know, like I'm not even... Fantasy football now exists on only on ES, only on ESPN.com. Like, whatever. I like. I don't think I even had a Twitter following at that point. Like, look, I'm I'm when, I'm not, I'm gonna stop flexing. I go to bed at nine o'clock too. Yeah, I ain't true. Right. I'll be I'll be right. sleep. <laughs> so like, I mean, no, I I I will occasionally, but like, yeah, exactly. Ten thirty eleven. Like anyway, like uh, the question is, is ten thirty eleven? Oh, like, should I close this out or keep this going and just you know, uh, yeah. right? And so the that's the premise of the. Um, that's the premise of, yeah. of, of this particular segment. There you go. God bless. There Keep it go. open, end up on a dating blog. For those blog, of you that are right, exactly. Close it out, get to bed by 8 p.m. So we're going to start that with a man that could <laughs> potentially be back on the, the dating life. Tom Brady is our mm, first person up he here. He definitely is. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's Tom well, Brady it's now. Tom Brady. Yeah. Tom Brady traveling to play the Arizona Cardinals. Just, Juicy I like, matchup. I like, by the way, I like all the women throwing their hat in the ring. Like, just, bla- you know, and I don't blame them. You can't, have, you, you can't have no shame when it's no, Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. Like, you not. better shoot Nobody's that shot, girl. Shoot or shoot. I don't care how fine you is. Shoot your shot with shoot Tom Brady. Shoot your <laughs> shot. Listen, I might throw my hat in the ring. Listen, he's very <laughs> handsome. Make no mistake. Honey, I'm sorry, but TB12 is giving me a call up to the big leagues. Uh, and, yes, I'm keeping it open on Tom Brady. You had me at Arizona, yeah. okay? Well, there's only one team in the NFL that's given up more touchdown passes than the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, a disappointing loss for the Buccaneers last week, guys. But what was impressive to me is, yes, he had the turnovers. The turnovers were tough. But I don't expect that to happen against Arizona. The Bengals' defense much better than the Cardinals. And more importantly, like, the offense looked competent. The offense looked like, oh, yes, that's Tom Brady. That's the Buccaneers. Look at Chris Godwin doing Chris Godwin things. Look at Mike Evans. Oh, my goodness. Russell Gage. You know, Russell Gage showing up with two touchdowns. Yeah. They have Julio back, by the way. Tristan Wirfs is practicing today. So the offensive line getting healthier as well. So, yeah, I'm keeping it open. They're six-point favorites in this game. Brady has at least two touchdown passes in four of the last five. Top ten play for me this week. Yeah, QB Borderline. 10. QB 10. But- yeah, QB 10 for Barry. Yep. Lawrence, yeah, are, are you yeah, keeping that, this one open as yeah, well? Yes, uh, I'm going to keep it open. It's been ugly for the Bucks. It's been ugly, but we ain't going to get cute. Like you said, going against Arizona, this is not Joe Burrow on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Denver Broncos just beat this team with Brett Rippin. Arizona <laughs> yeah. Cardinals, seventh worst against quarterbacks in fantasy. Don't even think twice about it. Yeah, I. they're six and a half. By the way, the line's moved up to six and a half. So the, the betting public is on uh, Arizona. Yeah. All right. Another line open at six, moved to six and a half. Another one, the matchup is not as friendly. Dak Prescott versus the Eagles, who we don't know who's going to start a quarterback for the Eagles in this one, but we do know Dak is back for the Cowboys. And listen, under 15 fantasy points in three of his last four games here, guys. Any concern over Dak? Is it time time to call it after happy hour on this one? I think it sort of depends on what you need. I mean, the, the screen right there sort of shows you, right? I mean, starting in week 12, 14.8, 16.8, 13.7, 20.2 at the Jaguars, and certainly the Eagles defense is much closer to the Giants and Colts than it is the Jaguars. Like, he couldn't even get to 14 fantasy points against Houston. The issue with Dak Prescott isn't that he's a bad quarterback. He's a very good quarterback. The issue is is that their running game is also very good, Mm -hmm. and their defense is very good, and so Dak isn't being asked to do that much. He doesn't have to, he's running their offense, but he doesn't have to get on, you know, say like, all right, everyone, jump on my back. This is me and CeeDee Lamb, and we're just going to throw it 45 times a game. He, this year, Dak Prescott has one top five finish. Like, just one. You know, it was week eight against the Bears. He's had 30 or, 30 or fewer pass attempts in four of the past five games. Having said all that, he's Dak Prescott. Uh, they are favored in this game. Vegas currently does not think, our friends at Ben and Jim currently do not think Gardner Minshew is going to play in this game. And so the Eagles, who have allowed at least 19 fantasy points to starting quarterbacks in back-to-back games, who might be in poor field position because Gardner Minshew – Ain't Jalen Hurts, and does he throw a pick or two? He's got a little bit of True. gunslinger in him, like he's he yep, gets sometimes yep. careless with the ball. So Dak Prescott, who's had two touchdown passes in six of the, the the eight games he's played since he returned, there he's much more of a floor play uh-huh. than he is an upside play. So it depends on your matchup. Are you in the second week of a matchup? Are you heavy underdogs? Like it depends on what you need. He's going to be fine. He is he, he is much more of a floor quarterback than upside quarterback. If I need to swing for the fences see what else you have out there. So I'm probably keeping it open if you've been using him till this sure, point. Yeah. But um, 
But if I need to, like I said, I, he's my QB 12. I think there's a reason why. That's like a I, solid ranking, respectable. Yeah. It's like you ain't putting him too high, but it's like you ain't just going, you know what I'm saying? Like he's throw, like, this is the thing. It's the yards that's getting him. He not right. throwing for 300 yep. yards every game because two of the last three games, he's threw at least three touchdowns. So it's like you getting the touchdowns, but not the yards. And he's still throwing at least 30 passes in his past four games. So while that's not crazy volume, it's not the bare minimum, you know? So that's why we had to keep this open on that. Lawrence, let's stay with this game, with Miles Sanders on the other end of things. We don't know who's going to start a quarterback, which you hinted at earlier could impact, you know, what kind of effect Miles Sanders has on this game, notably in the red zone. Where are you at with him after? He's exceeded expectations this year in fantasy, yeah, right. but he's cooled off the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and as you can see on the screen there, it's, it's up and down, up and down. I will add, though, a lot of his rushing success is due to the threat of Jalen Hurts sure. running the ball. He'll get more opportunities without Jalen. So it's like 50-50 there, you know. And, you know, first off, just in case y'all didn't see, he don't care about y'all tickets or y'all fantasy uh, points or whatever. He don't care. But we still going to start and we going to keep it open, right? Travis Etienne got back going. He was he was kind of uh, he was kind of on the downside. He got back right versus Dallas. The week before that, Damian Pierce had a good game against Dallas. So I want to keep this open on Miles Sanders and see what he do. Here's what I want to do. I want to see whether or not Jalen Hurts or Gardner Minshew is starting in this particular game. Because if Gardner Minshew is starting, I agree with uh, I agree with Lawrence here. I'm keeping it open, right? Last year, the second most fantasy points he had in the game last season was with Gardner Minshew as the starting quarterback. When Gardner Minshew started in Week 13 last year, he had 27 touches. That was a season high for him last year. I, and by the way, one of the issues for Miles Sanders is he keeps getting vultured at the goal line by Jalen Hurts. So if Jalen Hurts yeah. isn't there, he's Boom. got a much better chance of getting into the end zone against Dallas. However, if Jalen Hurts starts, then I think I'm closing it out. Mm. In games this year in which Miles Sanders does not score a touchdown, he's got double digit touchdowns on the season, but in games in which he doesn't get into the end zone, he's averaging 6.4 fantasy points per game. So, and I think that there's a chance if Jalen Hurts plays that – he vultures a touchdown. Now, again, Definitely. Jalen Hurts, if Jalen Hurts is playing, he's playing with a, a, a bum shoulder, and so maybe Nick Sirianni says, you know, no, no, listen. We, yeah. just, you're not going into the scrum there. You know, hand it off to Miles or, or Boston Scott or something like that. But there is always still the chance that, like, there's a bootleg run or something like that, um, or even, like, one of the touchdowns we saw last week, which was a 10-yard run where he just kept going because no one was there yeah. and brilliant play call by the Eagles. So I, I think that in the semifinals where you can't get cute – I think given the fact that yeah. he's he struggled, he doesn't have passing game usage, he's struggled so much, and it's a tough matchup, I think that if Hurts is starting, I'm probably closing it out on Miles Sanders. But the expectation right now is that Gardner Minshew is going to start, so right. I'm keeping it open on Miles Sanders. All right, we always start off with a couple easy ones. It's basically dollar beers for the first couple. Sure, You're sure. not going anywhere. Yeah. Let's make this a little bit more difficult right now and look at Leonard Fournette. Sure, matchup's great. Arizona's defense, not really much going there. But with Leonard Fournette right now, the floor – seems to always be there with Leonard Fournette. Yeah. The ceiling has not been what you hoped for when you take Leonard Fournette, you know, early in fantasy drafts. So, Barry, where are you at with Fournette this week? Where The good thing is Arizona's playing Trace McSorley. They could fall behind in this game, and the Bucks are just running the ball. But will it be Leonard Fournette? Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be a split between him and Rashad White. But in a game in which they're favored by almost a touchdown – Give me Uncle Lenny in this one. Actually, he may show up on Love Hate this week and others mm, receiving keep votes. An eye out. Mm. Something to keep up. Like, he's had six straight games with double digit fantasy points. He plays Arizona that gives him the seventh most fantasy points to opposing running backs. He plays an Arizona defense that just made Latavius Murray and Marlon Mack. Did you see fantasy that? Fantasy heroes. Did you see that? Back to life. Oh, Marlon Mack. Running all over him. All over him. And so, again, we talked about it with Brady. Their offensive line is getting healthier. They're, they're, favorites, in, they're favorites in this game. I think Fournette, who, you know, has gotten some passing game usage as well. Yeah, I think Fournette is a viable flex this week. I'm keeping it open on Uncle Lenny. Yeah, well, he's he's got the six targets over uh, the last three games as an average. We all we gonna start calling him fantasy playoff Lenny now. Yeah, there you go. They 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 definitely you can't call him Lombardi Lenny no, no. more because they ain't looking like, like no Lombardi that. team. We'll call him fantasy playoff Lenny. And I got a prediction that you are gonna have Leonard Fournette on that love list. All right, there you go. There you go. All right, moving over to Deontay Foreman against the Lions. Listen, disaster week for Deontay Foreman last Dude. week. Ten carries, nine yards. 
probably lost, <laughs> bumped Ooh. a lot of people from the playoffs that started oh. Deontay Foreman. Brutal. And we know Bam Knight had no success against this Lions front no. because the Lions are defenses like this right now, guys. If you don't have a quarterback that they respect and have felt that way against Zach Wilson, will probably feel that way against Sam Darnold, they will load up the box and sell out. Lawrence, hearing that, where's your confidence with Foreman this week? It's confident enough to know I'll close this tab and go home earlier than that 1030 yeah. he was talking about yeah. earlier. Seeing what Zonovan Knight went through against that Lions defense was enough for me because he had been successful for two, three weeks prior to that. You can throw against this de this Detroit Lions uh, defense, but you cannot run against them. So think about that for the next guy we talk about, but I, I got to keep it close. Plus, Chuba Hubbard, he's made himself a factor the past two weeks, uh, so I, I got to close it out. But, hey, I like you, though, Deontay Foreman. Like him too, but the problem is, is that it doesn't seem like Carolina does anymore, which mm -hmm. is it's super yeah. weird, right? I mean, like he played, he played less than thirty percent of the snaps last week uh, as well. He's had one reception in the past five games. He has no passing game usage at all, yeah. and so he's on the he's it appears to be on the wrong side of a ta timeshare with Chuba Hubbard. And I don't know why that switch happened, but to your point about the Lions, they're a top three run defense over the last month, and so yeah. you've got a guy that's got no passing game usage in a really tough matchup on the wrong side of a timeshare like he's in my 40s like after what you saw last week you're in week 16 of the fantasy playoffs first off by the way if you started him last week you probably got bounced but if you Definitely. somehow if you somehow miraculously <laughs> survived last week based on his point one or whatever it is he got why on earth would you ever go back to the well? Yeah, for me. Like, no you know, right, exactly. Like, Ain't no you, way you're, like you're on live number nine now. Like, you know, like you, you wasted hey, maybe, eight. maybe they like, you know what? I still won last yeah, week. I'm going to just leave him in. Oh, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> I, I know. I'm closing it out. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I have Deontay Foreman in a lot of leagues, but I'm closing him out. Let's stay with that offense and look on the other side of things with DJ Moore, who, listen, for all the good about the Lions' run defense, a lot of bad about the pass defense. Sure. They give up a lot of yards. They give up a ton of points on the back end here. We know the story with DJ Moore this year. We don't have to go back down that road. But, Barry, do you dare start him in the, with this matchup in the fantasy numbers. playoffs? You know, I'm at wide receiver 27. I, uh, boy, <laughs> this one's so tough. This one's so tough. I, again, he did have he did have the touchdown last week. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold did play well. It was an unbel by the way that catch was a ridiculous like it like it was like that much of a corner to the end zone. Uh, just um, that uh, DJ Moore came down with. And to your point, like I don't think they're going to run that successfully against Detroit. They're at bottom. Uh, they're a bottom three pass defense over the last four weeks. That's how you attack them. I am reluctantly keeping it open with DJ Moore. Reluctantly. Very, like, again, I know, like, why am I clapping? It, it, like, it's I, like, it's like, a shoe. Dude, he's brutal. He's wide receiver <laughs> 27. I just, again, because of the matchup, because Sam Darnold's looked competent the last two weeks, I, I am, if, let me put it this way. By keep it open, I assume you've been playing him this whole time. So if you've gotten to this point with him, I assume you're like in a 12-team or deeper league where you don't have a lot of other great options. Again, he's a wide, he's a risky wide receiver three. Yes. But I'm going to, I'm going to reluctantly keep it open on DJ Moore. Yeah, I don't think uh, anybody should really have the audacity at this point in the fantasy season to bench him versus the Lions. If it was somebody else, maybe, but we just saw Zach Wilson throw for over 300 yards against them boys. So it's like, eh, you know, Sam Darnold, he could do that. You know, they got similar traits, you know. Um, so, and they can't, they ain't going to run against them. Right. You know, use that mobility, Sam Darnold. Make those big throws that you can, and hopefully they are caught by DJ Moore. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. I, the one thing I will say, though, is just as you sort of look through your lineup, just understand that, like, when DJ Moore is bad, he is bad. Yeah. He is absolutely brutal. Yeah. Uh, he's had single-digit fantasy points in over in 50% of his games this year. He's got six different games with under seven fantasy points. Like, so when he kills you, mm. he absolutely kills you, but – it's been a little bit better recently. Yeah. There does seem to, it's a good match. Like you start him, but you can't be mad if he don't if he flops. No, you're you can't understand. be mad. No. He is he is a textbook definition of a risk reward wide receiver three this week. All right, our last one here: Amari Cooper against the Saints, eight uh, points per game in the three games he's played with Deshaun Watson this year. Obviously, has not gotten to that double digit territory as you see on the screen right now. Here's his stats since Watson was named the starter. Lawrence. With that trickle effect, it's crazy. Cooper was fine with Jacoby Brissett. This offense has not been that same as the same way as Watson tries to shake the rust off. Are you closing it out on Amari Cooper? 
that thing is gonna be so close yeah. uh, this week. Now, I don't even gotta look at these stats, you right? Know. I just know it's gonna be cold Amari Cooper day, and that don't ever go well. Mm -hmm. Then you take it to the fact that it's, this, the game total is set at 32 and a half. The like, most in like 10 years, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah more than 10 years. This yeah. is 2008. Oh, that's good. God. That's, I, like, it don't even look real. When you look at your whatever sports book app you use, when you look at it, it don't even look real. Yeah. Iowa right. Northwestern. That's the kind of game total it's <laughs> yeah. set at. Yes. Right, right. Perfect yeah. right. example. My, high school, there. my kids' high school games are set with a higher over under than 32 right. and a half. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, um, by the way, in, what's, what do you mean, what sports book app? You're looking at BetMGM, where you've used promo all, code. All you, Come uh, on. Yeah. That's what they should be free. using. That's what they should be, they should be using. But you know, some folks, you know, some folks. Thank Some you. folks be hating. We got to get them to come over to our right, side. Exactly, Lawrence. <laughs> I appreciate that. I agree with you. It doesn't look real. Um, so not only is it going to be cold, it's going to be windy. 40 mile per hour wind gusts are expecting this game. And we've seen it over the years every once in a while, especially as we get late in the season. Those windy games in Cleveland, like it's yeah. where that stadium is and where that sta – like it just gets like brutal. And then you think about the fact that Amari Cooper traditionally has not played well in the cold. He has not looked good or on the same page with Deshaun Watson since they, since um, since he has started uh, as as quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, and and a tough matchup as well against the New Orleans Saints. We'll see if Marshawn Lattimore is active for this game. I don't know, but there's a chance that he might be. I just all of it just screams. No, no, no. We're closing it out. We're, you could we're, be covering we're Amari. Card back. You I'm, could I'm, I'm you could home. be covering Amari Cooper this week. Trust me on that. It'd have to be his own coverage. I, and I need some help. Well, cover two? Well, cover need, two? I need some help over the top. And candidly, underneath is Connor well. got you over the top. I got you over the top. He got you over the top. Okay, fair enough. And that's why I'll get us out of here. We're going to break right now, but when we're back, it's what's on tap. Some of the most pivotal matchups of the fantasy weekend. Don't worry, I will explain the premise when we come back. Look at these lads right here. There you go. The, the legendary <laughs> Kyle Pitts. Well, Video. Me, right, exactly. Me and uh, me and Lawrence got our WWE on to uh, <laughs> to talk to try to get uh, Kyle Pitts getting going. Lawrence is a bigger WWE fan than I am, so uh, to come out here onto the screen, Lawrence, I think our question to you is, what is the um, what is the key to doing a good woo? Well, it's, you got you gotta have the energy. It's mm -hmm. it's like a build up. You gotta okay. really you gotta really want that win. You gotta really want that W. And when you get that fantasy football W, maybe you will be a styling and profiling champion like me right here. Woo! With this belt right here from Trophy Smack, you can get belts just like this at TrophySmack.com. Holla at them. Yeah, our friends. Uh, we appreciate our friends at Trophy Smack. And like, I like the woo, the woo was quick. So it's sometimes like it's quick, like, so, cause like when Ric Flair said, he'd be like, I'm riding in the limousine 15 miles long. And when girls see me, they say, woo. Sometimes he right be, back into yeah, it. And go it's right unreal. back into talking. So it's like, he, sometimes it's a long one, but when he's talking about the girls, it's a quick one. All right. Fair enough. Understood. There's a lot of different uses yeah, for yeah, the yeah, woo. Yeah. Woo. Man, woo. 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 Is that no? Uh, we'll we'll workshop drink. that. Right, who's that guy? That's Woo like that. That's like a New Year's like Happy Woo New Year. Woo! That's that's a, the one you just. Woo <laughs> this gonna, thing is six pounds of chromed out customizable uh, metal for your own swag. Be sure to head to TrophySmack.com and use their easy to use design tool that allows anyone to create the most epic and unique hardware ever. That is from Trophy Smack. A big thank you to them. For hooking it up, hooking up our hardware for the happy hour show league. Okay. What's on tap? All right, Barry. Yeah, well, Break so, so again, like, we're in a bar. That's what and I keep so, hearing. Right, and so at a bar, just like we do, it's a working bar. We've got taps up there. By the way, happy Hanukkah to all that celebrate here. It's um, last night was the third night of Hanukkah. Uh, but anyway, so, like, what's on tap is sort of like, first off, that's something you might ask to a bartender. Hey, what, what's on tap here? What do you have on tap? And they point at the chalk list like you're point, an idiot. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's they get really that, annoyed at that Yeah, question. exactly. Like, it says, see the sign that says what's on tap? That's what's on tap here. <laughs> but then also, it can have kind of a double meaning, like what's coming up, you know? And, and so we're using this as a double entendre, if you will, because we're in a bar. That's the premise of the segment here. What's on tap? What's upcoming for the weekend in fantasy football? Again, because we are in a bar. Indeed, indeed. And yep, there you go. With that, we will start at the Bills. Because actually, I don't think people understand. Like, I, I think you got to break it down for them so they can, you know. Well, I did say some of the most pivotal matchups. Sure. In fantasy. There's that as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. And these these are very fantasy relevant. The Bills are yeah. nine and a half point favorites traveling to Chicago. A massive line here. The over under set at 40 and a half. I think the big question with this game, guys, is trust. And with the Bills, we often ask, do you trust Motor Singletary? Singletary, no. do you trust a Gabe Davis? Is an out right now? I know Gabe Davis is somebody you say you just you're either starting him every week or you're just out entirely. I think you're out entirely that. So I mean, I think I mean it again. Sort of depends. He's my wide receiver 32, so I'm outside the top 30. I'm as a high end wide receiver four in games in which he doesn't score a touchdown. He's averaging under seven fantasy points per game. He's been single digit fantasy points now in four straight. So it like the only argument for starting him is, you know. He's due. I'm hoping for a prayer. Like, yeah. there, there's no statistical. There's hope. Ad. You got there, it. There's hope. hope. Like, there, there, there's hope. I mean, like, it, like he's had a 15% target share over the last four weeks. They'll take a couple of shots to him. And you're hoping one of those pays off. But, um, you know, and it's a decent matchup against Chicago that, that allows the fifth highest completion rate on deep passes. And he is going to get a deep shot or two. So, nothing would surprise me with Gabe Davis. If he has 30 points, I would believe it. If he has another seven and a half point game, I would believe it as well. I just sort of feel like if you're in the playoffs, you've done so either without Gabe Davis or despite Gabe Davis. Right. And for me, I'm probably, you know, I'm probably looking elsewhere. I also want no part of Devin Singletary, right? I mean, like, again, he's had under 55 rushing yards in three out of four. He's played under 50% of the snaps in two of the last three. They're using James Cook. Again, it's still a pass-first offense, but they're – and Naheem Hines all of a sudden is showing up occasionally. Like, it it feels like a three-headed monster, and you're hoping that he falls in the end zone for a touchdown, which could happen, but – He's a yeah. low-end flex for me. I, I, He's running back 29. I, I would say, like, I, I feel the way you feel about him, but I would say with Devin Singletary and Gabe Davis here, looking at the over-under, looking at the spread, I have definitely more hope for a Devin Singletary. They get there around that goal line. If Josh Allen don't take it in, usually the next guy in line is Devin Singletary. So, you know, we ain't, we ain't throwing the pom-poms for either of these dudes, but I feel a little better about Singletary than uh, Gabe Davis. Lawrence, when you say, look, yeah. when you say throwing the pom poms, is, is that where when you grew up? Like when T.O. did right, the right, little I was thing. Say, is it yeah. shake the pom poms? Yeah, I meant the shake. Is like, yeah, I meant like, the, what's going? Like, I, I, what I meant, angry cheerleaders I, I, I are, meant, are in I your mean, games? I meant to say shake the pom because I was okay. thinking about T.O. when he took the pom poms. Right, right, right. Like, okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, no pom poms for any player. No pom poms for neither one of these. Yeah, I got it. I was just like, it was like. What cheerleaders are <laughs> throwing saying, them out like, on the field? Cheerleaders be mad as hell at my yeah. high school. We yeah, stuck. I, yeah, were you guys bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Staying in this game, Lawrence, Justin Fields. I mean, are we at the point where he's just matchup proof? Because the line tells you the Bills are going to blow out the Bears in yeah, this right. game. That's the expectations. But does that even matter in terms of Fields sitting or starting? Because I think everyone's just playing him at this point. Yeah, nah, who, who are you starting right? over Justin Fields? Like, let's be real. Like, I don't care about no good matchups. Like, Justin Fields is one of them dudes when it comes to – and when did we figure this out? Eight weeks ago? Yeah, nine yeah. weeks ago? Like, this is not even really worth even speaking on. You are starting him – at the Bills, I don't care about the weather. He in, he playing Chicago too, so yeah, man. This this is a quarterback you need right now. Eight straight games with 18 or more fantasy points. He is matchup proof. He's my quarterback for this week. The game's in Chicago as well. Bills, by the way, Bills have been good, but they haven't been great. I mean, they've given up at least 230 passing yards in three of the last four. So it's not like teams aren't moving the ball at least a little bit against them. Obviously, Tua had a usable game against them last week. Could run against them too. You can absolutely yeah. run a lot against of tackles them. On I mean, yeah. yeah, come on. Yeah, you're starting. Don't get cute. You're starting Justin Fields. You're also starting David Montgomery. Yes, sir. I, I know that Kurt Herbert's back, but I have him as a top 15 play this week. Um, he's got at least 15 touches in four straight games. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that I still think in Herbert's first game, still think he gets 60% of the snaps um, uh, against them. Look, I think you're lowering expectations, but you're still starting. Uh, you're still starting David Montgomery this week. Yeah, and on the screen right now, we had Montgomery's stats uh, since week 11, since Herbert has been out. He's been highly productive making that backfield. Yeah, he's, he's – yeah, he's been good. I mean, that's the other thing is, is like there's some passing game usage as well for him. He caught a touchdown pass last week as well. I feel like he'll have more passing game usage than Herbert in this one in a game in which they're almost 10-point underdogs. Yeah, I, more low-end RB2, higher flex than he is, you know, locked-in starter that he has been previously. But I'm starting David Montgomery this week. Let's move over to the Commanders traveling to play the 49ers. The 49ers are seven-point favorites. The over-under is set at 39.5. The Heineke 
Brock Purdy show. Not yeah. something we expect to say before the well, season who are the, started. Uh, like, so what's the what's the line? 39 and a half. 39 pretty and a half. Pretty, but I'm just yeah. saying that four, Niners are favored by uh, seven? Seven. Yeah. Yep. Saved by a touchdown. So that means that John Hussey and his crew are not working this game. Because it'd be more, honestly, <laughs> if they had to face that crew again. Look, I, I've said this before. I've said this all week. And I, I want to give my credit. I want to give a shout out to John Hussey and his crew. Like, they beat the Commanders, you know, fair and square. Like, you know what? Commanders gave it their best shot, but ultimately, you know, like, the, the refs did a great job. They, they closed it out. They, they did what the they, Eagles they, couldn't they, do they, a month they, ago. Exactly. They, um, they, you know, they committed where they needed to. And, you know, listen, the, the refs are now the sixth seed in the NFC East. Oh, I'm sorry, in the NFC playoffs. They're the sixth seed. Yeah. Lawrence, we know how good this Niners defense is. I will never get over that game. Oh, I, don't I know. I've noticed that. I know. I was here Monday. We did yes. 30 minutes on it to open At the show. Least. It is now Wednesday. I'm still back. not over it. I'm still not over it. I'll be the back Friday. We'll find our way The commanders could win the Super Bowl this year, and I will still bitch about this next year. I'm just warning you guys. Because <laughs> you could have had that extra win. It, it could have been. It's that egregious. I had Brian Robinson going that's in the league. I needed a touchdown. It's the Robinson touchdown being. The Robinson touchdown as well. I had Curtis Samuel, believe it or not, going in a super deep league. Could have, you know, anyway. I will never get over it. This Niners defense, Lawrence, does that give you any concern for, I mean, it's crazy to talk about concern for Terry McLaurin, but even somebody like Brian Robinson, just because they've been so effective pretty much week in and week out. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. I'd be uh, pretty nervous about, uh, like, it's dudes you can't sit right now, especially yep. Terry McLaurin. Yeah, not sitting them. But you got you to gotta temper the expectations. Like, this defense is, I, I watch him every week, and I'm like, Who's going to break through and, like, yep. play some offense against – like, it's the Chiefs, the last ones that did it way back when. They put up 44 on them. Um, you know, they haven't allowed a, a running back to reach 60 yards all season. 60 yards, that ain't a lot. Yep. So, it, it's going to be tough for uh, – it's going to be tough for your crew, Matthew. It's going to be very tough for them, uh, which is why it was so important that they that they beat the Giants right. and, and at least get, you know – good calls and they weren't able to <laughs> here's what i'll say i agree with you you're starting Terry, terry mclaurin the target share is too much the talent is too much if there's one way to attack the niners defense is awesome but it, it, it's easier to attack their secondary than it is their defensive line yes it is worth it is worth noting that the uh over the last four weeks the 49ers are 19th in, against the pass in terms of they've given up the 19th most yards per uh most 19th most passing yards per game over the last four weeks and so I think you're starting him but yeah I'm out on Brian Robinson I'm out on uh Jahan Dotson I'm out on anyone that's sort of like on the fringes there uh, McLaurin I feel like is the only commander you can feel comfortable starting in this game I also don't love by the way the commanders have a pretty good defense as well like if you've been rolling with Brock Purdy, okay. You're starting McCaffrey, of course. You're starting Kittle, of course, because he's a tight end. But don't think I'm trusting Brandon Ayuk in this one as yeah, well. It's been a rough go. Two back-to-back -back bad games on Brandon Ayuk, who, uh, who's had under three receptions in two of the three games that Brock Purdy has been under center. They just they're going to run the ball, the, the Niners, right? The last three games they're fourth in rush rate. They don't want to ask Brock Purdy to do too much, and so you know he scored the touchdown in Week 14, but I. I, you know, I don't know. They're going to run and set up the offense for wide open passes, which is what happened for George Kittle on one of his touchdown runs. I mean, you see it in the numbers for Kittle. Four receptions, 93 yards, two touchdowns. That was clearly, you know, it was set up by the run and Christian McCaffrey getting going. It's an all-hands-on-deck type of offense right there with Christian McCaffrey leading the way. So Brandon Ayuk could go out there and get seven receptions for 90, but – he's been getting two and three because yeah. it's just what the offense calls for. Yeah, it's a rookie quarterback that the comfort is with throwing to the running backs and the tight end. Yeah, and he's doing his him. job. And Yeah, and that's what Shanahan is going to scheme up for him. Moving over to the AFC, the Bengals, three-and-a-half point favorites, traveling to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Uh, the highest over-under out of the three games we're discussing here at 41-and-a-half. Wow. I'm sure that is heavily due to the Cincinnati Bengals offense. Listen, the bottom line is the Patriots still have a good defense here, guys. We can laugh at them as much as we did last week for how the game ended. But is there any concern for the Bengals' offense uh, due to the matchup? No. 
no, across I mean, the look, board, right? Not obviously not just Burrow and Chase and Higgins, but even down to Boyd and the running backs. Boyd, there's concern, right? I mean, Boyd has had under 50 receiving yards in five of the last six healthy games that he's played. He paid off with a touchdown last week. I don't know that you can expect that against the Patriots. So, but I mean, like for Higgins and Chase and Burrow and Joe Mixon, I think you're starting him. My only concern with Mixon is, you know, he's more of an RB2 than the, you know, RB1 he was drafted at because Samaj Piran has carved out a legitimate role in this offense, and rightfully so. So since he returned from injury, Joe Mixon is playing under 65% of the snaps. Now, Piran's not getting enough work that you would care about Piran, yes. but he is getting enough work that you have to lower expectations for Mixon. That said, I don't think you can bench him. I don't know that you have better options here. And on the other side of the ball, the only Patriots relevant player here fantasy-wise, is Ramondre Stevenson. We'll see if Damon yes, Harris sir. comes back as well. They were both limited. Uh, they're both listed as limited during Tuesday's practice, Harris and Stevenson. But Ramondre has had at least 16 touches in every healthy game since week three. He's had over 70 yards in every single one of those games, over 20 fantasy points in two of the past three. He is a man among men out there. Ramondre Stevenson, what we talk Gotta about Gotta be the, the best bargain. Right. He was, a, he was on a preseason love list. I was like, this guy should not be drafted after Damian Harris. He is one that has made me look smart in a call that has worked out. I don't know how, after what he did last week, even if Damian Harris is active, how you're benching Ramondre Stevenson. He's a top 10 play for me this week, regardless of the health status of Damian Harris. Yes, when sir. we come back, we will... Um, eh, we'll, Sunday Night 7. We'll talk Sunday Night... Well, and something Sports interesting, predictor. too. Something... Something... <laughs> Oh, man, that's good. Last call. Let's get into some of these SN7 predictions. Lawrence, let's start with you. We're looking at Mike Evans receiving yards. What range are you rocking with for Evans? You know, he got eight, over 80 yards for the first time since week eight or nine. So, you know, I'm going to go 65 to 79 here for, uh, for Mike Evans. Try to get back on track a little bit versus the Cardinals. All right, Barry, we're looking over to you. You have DeAndre Hopkins receiving yards. Obviously, another broad range here going all the way up to over 115. What do you like on this board for Hopkins? Yeah, you know what? I think he, uh, for me, give me the 80 to 89 range as well. He's had 79 and a half receiving yards per game over the last four games. Trace McSorley under center potentially here. Patriots give up the 11th fewest receiving yards to opposing wide receivers, but I think volume gets him there. So uh, I'm going to say the 80 to 89 range for DeAndre Hopkins on Sunday night. All right, I have Tom Brady here, guys. Tom Brady passing yards. This number has not been as high consistently as we had hoped for coming into the season. I'll go right in the middle here, 260 to 279 against Brady. I think we'll come out firing. I think they'll be run heavy in the second half. And let's, let's close with a fun one here from our friends at BetMGM, essentially looking at the worst division in football. I don't sure. even think a team should be in the playoffs from this division at this no. point. The NFC South, Agreed. the Bucks are set at minus 350 to win the South. Their schedule in the last three, nothing crazy at all. How confident are you in them actually closing the deal here with the Falcons, the Panthers, the Saints? Been a rough year for this division. I mean, it, it, true, but they, but Carolina and Atlanta have both played, you know, better than yeah. you'd expect defense. And so what's crazy to me is that I think they should still be the favorite. Yeah. They still have Tom Brady, but minus 350 when they're only a game up and they have to play Carolina and Atlanta. They have to, you know, both games are a game out, by the way. Panthers, by the way, Detroit at Tampa Bay at New Orleans. They're plus 400. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I don't know, man. Like, to me, Carolina is kind of interesting. They're, yeah. they're, they're playing well. Yeah, it's like we could feel like the Bucks are going to win the division but not take that bet at minus 350. Like, I'm not using my hard-earned NBC or Roto War dollars yeah. making this bet. I'd rather take it on, on teams like the Panthers who have beat them you know, or the yeah. Falcons who have played close to them and just take the plus money on that. Yeah, if I'm betting on that, that's where I'm going. Before we get out of here, our honorable Matthew Berry spoke to, I want to make sure I get this right, English Lansing? NG Elementary. Landing. Landing. English Landing. English Landing Elementary in Kansas City. Berry spoke to a uh, young class that they like fantasy football. Apparently. Yeah, they have a little club and they asked me, the th third, third through fifth grade, nine mm -hmm. to 11 year olds, they asked me to come speak to the class. I was honored. So it happened. Great kids. Well, they were honored. They wrote Barry some really nice cards that he has not <laughs> seen. I handpicked some of them out. The first one, thank you 
uh, for calling us. I'm very thankful for what you had in your mind. I did not know a lot of fantasy football, but because of you, I know a lot more now. Okay. To Matthew Berry, thank you for your time from Gus. P.S. I'm first in the league. I'm 9 0. I have Patrick Mahomes. Let's go, Gus. Go. <laughs> we got a Super Bowl prediction. Okay. The Super Bowl prediction is thank you for the call. We are so happy you could talk. We are very happy he could talk as well. <laughs> I believe that the Bengals versus the Eagles, and honestly, the Bengals would destroy the Eagles. Ooh, okay. The last one, thank you. And uh, this one says. Go Bills with the Chiefs crossed out. Wow. In Kansas City. They live in Kansas City. Love you, kids. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, respectfully, respectfully respectfully okay respectfully please subscribe to the nfl on nbc youtube channel for the latest nfl news fantasy headlines from rotor world and betting analysis from nbc sports edge